Good morning, good day. Welcome to this devotional for the 30th day of Lent. My apologies to those of you who like to listen a little earlier in the day. Today was just one of those that kind of got stacked up, and so I'm, I'm not getting today's devotional out until after noon, but I hope that you'll have the opportunity to benefit from it. Our theme today is for the ones who choose to break their hearts for ours. In The Lives We Actually Have, Kate Bowler says it this way, Blessed are you who let your heart break. You don't have to. You could just have easily skirted the issue, shrugged it off as someone else's job, but you didn't. You gave the ride, or set up the meal train, or sat in the waiting room, You handed your precious time over to the inefficiency and exhaustion of tragedy. Blessed are you who show up during someone's worst day because it's your job. The healthcare worker, funeral director, foster parent, chaplain, social worker, pastor, lawyer, police officer, or judge. You who have not allowed yourself to be hardened by all you've seen. You who offer the gift of steady presence amid swirling chaos. Blessed are the communities of care that surround us when we fall apart. Knowing we can't do this alone and trusting that even if we don't have the answers or the right words to say or know exactly what to do, we will continue to show up again and again and again because that's what love demands, to let our hearts break together. Walter Brueggemann, writing in a book titled The Prophetic Imagination, says, Compassion constitutes a radical form of criticism for it announces that the hurt is to be taken seriously, that the hurt is not to be accepted as normal and natural, but is abnormal and an unacceptable condition for humanness. We can't just ignore the hurt of others, can we? The book of Isaiah, chapter 58, verses 6 through 9 Our scripture for today, this describes the act of fasting, a religious act, and something that is intrinsically linked to action. Kate asks us to imagine the religious acts that you practice, like prayer or giving or worship, attending church. Do you see those as more for you or for others, or maybe both? Isaiah writes it this way. This is God speaking. This is the way that I want you to fast. You must remove the chains from prisoners who should not be in prison. You must stop being cruel to the people who work for you. You must let people who are in pain go free. You must break the yoke of work that is too hard for weak people. Instead, share your food with hungry people. Give a place in your home to poor people who have no home. Give clothes to people who have nothing to wear. If people in your own family need help, do not refuse to help them. Then God's light will shine on you like the sun's light at dawn. Very soon your troubles will go away. The good things that you do to help others will be clear for everyone to see. And the Lord will use his great power to keep you safe. Then you will ask the Lord for help, and he will answer you. When you call out to him, he will say, Here I am. But you must stop being cruel to other people. Do not accuse people, and do not say bad things about them. Boy, those are some pretty practical words from Isaiah writing, I don't know, 800 years or so before the time of Christ. Strikes me how much 
that message matches the one that Jesus gave to us, especially in places like the Sermon on the Mount. There is a podcast suggested today uh, at katebowler.com. You'll find uh, the interview that she did with Gary Haugen, who's the founder and CEO of International Justice Mission. And he talks about people who decide to make other people's pain their own. But how, he asked, or Kate asked Gary, how do you sustain heartbreaking work? And Gary responds by saying, joy is the oxygen for doing hard things. <laughs> I'm sorry I don't have the address to put in the description below, but if you'd like to listen further, find it at katebowler.com and find the podcast episode with Gary Haugen. Today we close with this prayer. God, Show me the gift I have to offer others. Blow your winds of love all around my efforts so they have that whiff of joy about them. Amen. I pray today that wherever you find yourself and whatever's happening around you, that you will find joy, that if you are in need Someone will be available to help meet your need. And if you have the opportunity, you'll be able to help someone else meet their need out of the abundance God has given you. Come back tomorrow and we'll be ready for the 31st day in Lent. God bless.